Cup changing is a very important job. This is because as the cup changer, you play a major role in determining how difficult the course will play that day. If the task is not done properly, it can affect the golfer's game. With appropriate training, a little practice, and an understanding of proper procedures, you can become an effective cup cutter and an important member of the golf maintenance team. While this program is designed to provide a basic understanding of cup cutting procedures, your supervisor will instruct you on the specific responsibilities and procedures followed on your golf course. Before heading out to the course, make sure you have all the proper tools to do the job. The main tool is the cup cutter. There are two common types. One is a lever action cup cutter like this one. The other uses blades, which are pounded into the soil using a rubber mallet or slide hammer. All types work well, but it is a matter of preference on which type your course has to work with. The cup cutter should always have a sharp edge on the cutting portion of the device so that the plug is cut crisp and clean. If the whole edges appear rough, sharpening is needed. See your equipment manager or supervisor for the correct method of sharpening the tool. Other common tools to take with you on the job include a hole cutter, a cup puller, cup setter, a bucket with some soil. Ask your supervisor what soil to use, a clean rag, a water bottle, a knife or similar tool, a ball mark repair tool, and additional flags. Once you have all the supplies ready, you are now ready to go out on the course to begin cutting cups. It is best to wait to change the cup until after the green is mowed. This is so the mower does not damage the new cup hole you just cut. Check with your supervisor regarding this policy on your golf course. When walking onto the green, make a quick visual inspection of the green. If anything looks irregular or odd to you on the greens, let your supervisor know immediately. Now you will need to decide the correct location on the green to cut the new hole. Some golf courses use a chart to rotate the cup placement around the green. Some courses use systems such as six holes have the flagstick placed in the front, six have it placed in the middle, and six have it placed in the back of the green. And others place the flagstick according to where the tee markers are placed. Choose a position that is at least three feet from any ball marks or old cup plugs when possible. Here's a tip. Use a ball mark as your new location, which will then remove that mark from the area of the new hole. Once you have identified the correct location, check the area where the cup is to be placed to ensure there is no damage that would affect the golfer's play. Although there are no USGA rules regarding hole locations, the USGA believes that good judgment should be used when deciding on a location that will give fair results. It is recommended that an area two to three feet in radius around the hole should be as nearly level as possible and of uniform grade, allowing a golfer the opportunity to stop the ball by the hole. Generally, the hole should be four paces from any edge of the green, giving a fair opportunity for recovery of a shot that just missed the green. Your course may have specific policies for proper hole locations. Check with your supervisor to see what is acceptable at your course. Do not place the new hole near any previous hole location. This allows the turf time to recover from the traffic. Also, if the outline of an old plug is still visible, do not place the new cup directly in the same location. The grass must be allowed to knit together first. When deciding where to place the cup on the green, think about the location from a golfer's point of view. The ball should be able to come to a stop at or around the cup when a putt is struck properly by the golfer. Some cup cutting devices have an adjustable stopping point that you set to ensure the hole is cut to the proper depth. This will minimize having to add or remove soil when setting the plug. Insert the cup cutter vertically into the putting surface to the full depth. Insert the cup cutter as smoothly as possible to avoid damaging the plug and keep the cutter as straight as possible. You want the cup vertically straight in the hole so when you place the flagstick it stands straight. Use caution not to twist your feet when cutting the hole. This will cause damage to the turf or leave marks that affect ball roll. 
A little trick you can use to ensure the cup cutter is going in straight is to insert the cup cutter in halfway. Step back a few paces and look to make sure it is still perfectly vertical. If the cup cutter is still straight, step back up to the device and continue cutting the new hole. When removing the plug, rotate the cutter and pull it out smoothly and slowly, taking care not to crown or disrupt the putting surface. The plug should remain in the cup cutter until you are ready to insert it into the old hole. In dense clay soils, you may have to make two cuts. In this case, insert the cutter about halfway to the desired depth. Rotate the cutter and carefully pull out half a plug. Place this half into your bucket for use later. Finish by reinserting the cutter into the hole, cutting to the proper depth. Again, rotate the cutter and pull out the rest of the plug, leaving it in the cutter until you are ready to insert it into the old hole. Other types of cup cutters require the use of a rubber mallet or a slide hammer to pound the blades into the green. Using the same principles just reviewed, make sure the cutter is vertical and then pound the blades to the proper depth. Then rotate the cutter and pull it out smoothly and slowly, taking care not to crown or disrupt the putting surface. The plug should remain in the cup cutter until you are ready to insert it into the old hole. Now let's show you how to place the cup and flagstick into the new position. First, carefully remove the cup from the old hole with a specially designed tool. Never use the flagstick to pull the cup out or pry it out of the hole. This could cause damage to the flagstick or the surrounding turf. Rinse the cup or wipe it clean before inserting it into the new hole. Once the cup is into the hole, set it to the proper depth with the cup setter. Insert the setter into the hole so it rests on the top lip of the cup and then push down on the cup smoothly and gently. Do not force the cup into the soil beneath. If necessary, remove some of the soil and reinsert the cup. If this is a frequent occurrence, check the adjustment on the cup cutting device and adjust if necessary. Remember, the depth of the cup should be a consistent one inch below the surface of the green. This tool also ensures that the area surrounding the new cup position is level. This is very important so that a golfer's ball being putted into the hole is not influenced by any slight unevenness in the green around the cup. Some courses paint the top one inch of soil above the cup for special tournaments or even every day. This helps the golfers to see the hole better when putting. Check with your supervisor to see if this is required any time at your course. To do this, simply place the painting guide in the hole and using paint made specifically for this task, twist the paint can around to paint the top one inch of soil above the cup. Now that the cup has been set to the proper depth, wipe the flagstick clean and insert it into the hole. Make sure to clean the flagstick ferrule to ensure that it does not become jammed in the cup, making it difficult for the golfer to remove. If your course uses different color flags or some other method of indicating the flagstick's location on the green, check to make sure you have completed this task properly. When inserting the flagstick, use caution not to damage the edge of the new hole. Also, it is important that the bottom of the flagstick is not forcing soil into the hole in the cup. If the hole in the cup is not clean of all soil, remove and clean the cup. Very important, if the flagstick is not perfectly straight, it should not be tapped, kicked, or forced in any way to make it straight. Trying to force the flagstick can cause several problems. One, it will damage sensitive roots if it jams the cup sideways. Second, it normally will result in a loose cup in the green. Finally, trying to force the cup to move in the soil could result in a crowned or uneven putting surface. If the flagstick is really crooked, then reset the cup in a new location. When setting the new plug into the previous hole, be sure to clean out any water or debris in the hole prior to inserting the plug. It is important to place the plug at the same depth so that the surface of the turf is level. If the plug is replaced too low, it will cause the ball to bounce when the ball is putted over the area. More importantly, if the plug is too high, the turf will be scalped when the green is mowed. This will cause an ugly brown spot on the green and possibly kill the turf grass. 
If minor changes in elevation are needed, add or remove a little soil. Each course has a different policy on what type of material to add if needed. Generally, it is the same soil that is in the existing green. However, check with your supervisor for the correct material. Getting the plug level with the surface is a feel thing, and it will take practice to be perfect. Perfection is a must in this process, and there is little room for error. Quality should take priority over speed. A high plug should never be forced down or stomped down. It might result in a temporary level surface, but chances are, once the area becomes moist, it will swell, resulting in a high plug anyway. If it is high, use the cup cutter or a knife to pull out the plug to remove some soil from the hole. A method to help level the plug is to roll a 2 to 3 inch diameter, 12 inch long PVC pipe using weight from your shoulders over the plug to level it with the surrounding area. If you are using the two-piece method, the soil from the cup cutter is inserted into the hole first. Check the depth of the top part of the plug from the bucket against the depth of the hole. If you need to make adjustments to level the plug, make them now. The top part of the plug is then inserted into the hole. If adjustments are still needed, add or delete soil from the hole as needed to get the plug level with the surface. After a little practice, you will get a feel for how much soil to add or delete to get it level. The alternative cup cutters are similar to the one-piece method. Place the cutter into the hole and then carefully pull the blades out. No matter which method you use, the newly placed plug should be felt with your foot to ensure the plug is even with the surrounding area. Use the normal weight of your foot to simulate a golfer stepping on it. The plug should not sink under your weight and should feel level with the surrounding area. Once the plug is level, use a ball mark repair tool or knife to knit the plug into the surrounding turf grass. Water the newly placed plug with the water bottle that you brought. This will decrease the time it will take the area to heal and avoid the plug from shrinking in dry weather. If conditions have been dry recently, be sure to water any visible plugs from the last couple of days to keep them from drying out and shrinking. Be sure to clean the area of any debris. Brush soil particles on the green surface with your hand or clean up with water. Also, look around for any high or low plugs that might have been overlooked on a previous day. These can be adjusted by inserting the cup cutter into the old plug, removing it, and adding or deleting a little soil from the hole. If the plug has been damaged by a mower, it's a good practice to take this plug to the edge of the putting surface away from normal golfer traffic. You can also replace the damaged plug with a good plug of turf grass taken from the edge of the green. The damaged plug is less likely to affect play on the edge than it is if it's in the original position on the putting surface. Some courses use a nursery green or practice green to replace damaged plugs. Check with your supervisor for the correct procedure at your course. Before leaving the green, make a quick visual inspection of the green, especially around the newly placed cup. Clean up any debris left behind. When returning to your maintenance vehicle, clean your cup cutting tools with a towel to minimize dropping soil particles on other greens. Use caution when cleaning the blade of the cutter. It is very sharp. Some courses ask that you repair ball marks when changing cups. Check with your supervisor to see if this is your obligation. Ball marks or other obvious surface disruptions might affect the golfer's ball as he puts it into the hole. Therefore, it is important to fix them correctly. It is best to use a pronged ball mark repair tool, if you have one. Possible substitutes could include a knife, key, or a golf tee. First, insert the repair tool in the back edge of the ball mark gently squeezing in toward the center of the mark. Continue bringing the edges together with a gentle twisting motion, trying not to tear the grass. Smooth the surface by gently tapping the area with your foot. If done correctly, the surface will show no signs of damage. Do not insert the tool and lift the soil up to the surface. This will leave a bare spot which is unsightly and allow for weeds to invade the putting surface. To fix a ball mark that was improperly repaired, insert the tool vertically into the dead spot. Twist the tool a couple of times and remove the dead material. Next, place your finger in the hole and tuck in the sides. 
Use the tool to gently twist in the sides, again using caution not to tear the grass. Finally, gently tap the surface with your foot to smooth the area. This training program is designed to provide general information and guidelines relating to servicing the cup cutting. Methods will vary from golf course to golf course. Always get clear directions from your supervisor before beginning any project.